Morning everyone. In this video we're going to revise the events and the key quotations in Act 4 of Shakespeare's Macbeth, the shortest act. As always, there's a link to the slides below if you want them. Now if we plot the Freitag's pyramid over the five act structure of Macbeth, we can see that the exposition, the rise in action and climax have already occurred. Macbeth is at peak villainy after arranging Banquo's murder and seeing his ghost at the banquet. The only direction he can go now is down. So let's recap his descent. So reflecting the opening of the play, this scene opens with a crack of thunder and three witches on the stage. They stood around a cauldron, thrown in various ingredients, and this is where we get the famed double double toil and trouble fire burn and cauldron bubble. When the potion seems ready to go, the second witch notes that by the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. This is just before Macbeth enters the scene. Is Macbeth the wicked one? Which would be pretty ironic coming from the mouth of a witch. Or is it the events that are to follow which are wicked? Macbeth tries to command the witches to tell him what he wants to know. He even tells them to call their masters. Three apparitions appear. The first apparition is an armoured head, and it says, Beware Macduff. A second apparition appears. This one is a bloody child, and it says, None of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Macbeth notes that these two contradict each other. Why fear Macduff if no one born of woman can harm him? He quickly adds killing Macduff to his list of things to do. Then the third apparition appears, which is a crowned child with a tree in its hand. And this one says, Macbeth shall never vanquished be until great Burnham Wood to High Dunsinane Hill shall come against him. Macbeth loves this news. He starts to feel like the horrible things that he's done are validated. And he asks them one more cheeky question. Shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Meaning, Will Banquo's descendants ever be kings? At this, there is a stage direction, a show of eight kings, the last with a glass in his hand, followed by Banquo. And Macbeth starts to freak out at this. He's having flashbacks to the ghost at the banquet and his fears have become true. Banquo's sons will reign, meaning that if Macbeth has any children, they won't. The witches vanish again. Lennox turns up and says that Macduff has fled to England. Macbeth tells himself that he needs to act more impulsively. So he decides to send people to Macduff's castle to murder everyone there. The next scene is set in Macduff's castle in Fife. Ross is speaking to Lady Macduff and they're discussing whether Macduff will be seen as a traitor for going to England. Ross notes that cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves. It's a sign of the times when many people are being accused of treachery. Ross leaves and Lady Macduff tells her son that his dad is dead and that he died a traitor to his country. A messenger turns up and says, be found not here, hence with your little ones. Danger is coming and you need to leave. A few murderers turn up. The first murderer stabs Macduff's son and calls him an egg, which might be the best insult in all of Shakespeare's plays. And the son then starts to die, and he says, He has killed me, mother. Run away. I pray you. She runs away and is chased off the stage by murderers, and we assume that she dies. Act 4, scene 3 is an odd one. It's a really long scene and it's the only scene to take place outside of Scotland. This one is basically Duncan's son Malcolm and Macduff having a bit of a chat in England as they suss each other out. Macduff sets out the current state of affairs in Scotland when he says that under Macduff's rule, each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face. Clearly the situation is horrible with so much death Malcolm refers to Macbeth as this tyrant whose sole name blisters our tongues. 
given us a hint of what people truly think of Macbeth as a ruler. But Malcolm also notes that Macduff and Macbeth used to be friends, so maybe Macduff is there to betray Malcolm and hand him over to Macbeth. Macduff realises that maybe Malcolm isn't up to the job of saving the country from Macbeth and laments, bleed, bleed, poor country. He's devastated that his beloved Scotland is coming to such a tragic end. The country's dying. Malcolm then goes into this whole speech where he says that Black Macbeth might be a bad king, but he's nothing compared to the horrors of Malcolm. Malcolm says that if he were in charge of Scotland, no woman would be safe from him. No jewel would be safe from him. He'd want it all. Macduff cries, oh Scotland, oh Scotland. And Malcolm says, you know what? I was just testing you. I'm actually a virgin. But your reaction has proven to me that you're on my side. You want what is best for Scotland. So let's take 10,000 men and get rid of the devilish Macbeth. But then Ross turns up and tells Macduff, your wife and babe savagely slaughtered. Macduff reels at this news and Malcolm tells him to use it as the fuel on his fire. He says, be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger, blunt not the heart, enrage it. So let's turn these emotions into motivation. Let's kill Macbeth and get me the crown. Macduff agrees to take down the Fiend of Scotland, and this spells the end for Macbeth. So, we know that Macbeth has gone a bit too far in his quest for dominance in Scotland, and he's angered Macduff. We know the witches have made three more prophecies that are so vague, they seem destined to trick Macbeth. And we know that Malcolm is on the move from England with 10,000 troops. The stage is set for the final showdown of Act 5. That's all for today's video. Like and subscribe if you found it useful, and make sure you tune in for the Act 5 video. Thanks for watching, and happy revising.